pull my keys back off of my tab array here and basically just going to scrape a tiny little bit of the, the yellowish orange and add it to my ultramarine blue and see what happens. And I came up with that, which is absolutely not what we want. That is, oh God. It's also very, it's very bright and there's almost no orange in it, which we can always add more orange, but once we want to take orange out of the mix, it's when it gets complicated. We have to, you know, cut a chunk of it, you know, cut it in half and then add orange or add more blue. And it, it's just a pain. So always add a little bit at a time. So here, I feel like I'm getting closer. I'm gonna add orange until we get to where I wanna be. I think we are very close here. So you can see this is a little more muted. It almost looks black on, on stream. But it is blue. That's just what happens when you have a crappy little camera. If I put it on my better camera, it won't focus. You're doomed. You're never going to know what this color is. Anyway, I am going to add a little tiny bit more orange to it. Just so we get a little bit of that green coming in. And Essentially, I've made the black I was talking about. I think I might have to add a little bit of white um, to really get the color I'm looking for a very little bit. It's just going to bring it out of that black, super dark value. Here, it's always good to have a towel for your palette knife. Um, if you're going into white, you don't want to mess up the white you have. You just want to take a little bit of that white and bring it to your mixture. So I didn't actually pull out any white, so gotta do that quick. Sometimes these tubes of oil paint are impossible to open. And what's worse is that the foil will sometimes twist with it and it feels like, like they're just gonna burst. You always want to be careful about that and try and avoid that twisting as much as possible, but sometimes it's unavoidable. All right, I'm gonna take a tiny little bit of that white, just enough to bring this out of that black range. And I think we have the exact color we're looking for. So let me get this mixed up a little better. You see that? Not really. So, let's see. If, let's see if I can get this to focus on this. No. All right. Well, then, let me get the focus back on the painting. Uh, yeah, I'm going down. Uh, you're not gonna see it. This is exactly what we're looking for. It's a dark blue, slightly green, just barely, barely turning green. A little bit of white made the color more visible. It's not like a solid black. This is exactly what we want. Now, I am kind of afraid I didn't mix enough of this. So, if that happens, that sucks. I'll make more, it won't be that big of a deal. Now, up into this, until this point, I've been using this tiny little brush. And for me, use this here would be absolutely asinine. Definitely don't want to do that. So we are going to go to our brushes. And for this, I typically like to use a filbert. You know, filbert is almost like a flat brush and a round brush mixed. So this is a filbert. Uh, let me put it in this one. 
Can you see that? Yeah. This is a Filbert. It's all, it's kind of flatter, but it's got rounded edges. It's a good multi-purpose filler, blocking in, kind of laying down color tool. As opposed to a flat brush, which kind of has a flat top to it. And this is, this has a very distinct purpose. Um, it's when you want to cover a, an area, but you want it to maybe be very smooth and flat, that, that really sharp cut on the top to make sure it stays flat. Here, I kind of want a little bit of, of varying thickness. I want a little thicker paint than what I would typically use, kind of like what's here. I don't think you can really see it or down here. Um, or even up here, this is thicker. If you look at it, it has texture. You can see brush strokes. That's when the filbert shines. So, we're gonna use this one. Not super big, I think it matches the size pretty well. You definitely don't wanna be using you know, this size filbert uh, you know, for this section. It's just too big. We're not gonna get a lot of um, nuance in our brushwork. Um, typically, if you want your brushwork to be looser, you wanna fold back on your brushes. You don't want to do this. You don't want to use like a pencil. You, you probably saw me doing that with this tiny little brush. You kind of have to if you want to get super minute detail. You, you're not going to be doing detail like this. But when you're working in a little uh, looser fashion, in this case, we're just going to block it in. And maybe we'll put in a little bit of, of structure to it with another brush. Um, but if you have long brushes, you want to be expressive. Let's say you want to do some post-impressionism. You want to do your your uh, uh, water lilies, you know, in the morning or some shit. Fold back. That's going to give you the expression you need. You're going to use your whole arm, maybe even your torso. You get what you need. It's going to look silly if you're doing this, but when you're in the moment, you're going to do it more than you think, and it's going to be more subtle than this exaggerated, like, stereotypical mm, artist bullshit. It's going to help you. Hold back. I'm going to be holding somewhere in the middle, somewhere around here. I want a little more control than what this is going to give me, but if you do this with a brush of this size, you're going to lose, it's going to look so contrived, you know, bad brush strokes. You have a bad time, you're not going to be happy with what you're making. So, here I'm going to dip my brush in my medium, and we are going to cover this area. Hopefully, I made enough paint. You check the time quick. Okay, we still got uh, another 50 minutes or so. Um, if you just tuned in, if you're liking the stream, uh, please consider following. Don't feel like you need to, um, but we'll be doing this every Monday and Tuesday evening from 6.30 to 9. So, I uh, hope to see you again. So, mixed our blue, got on our brush, we used our, our uh, oil medium. Remember, the medium is what we use to thin our paint, not our paint thinner. Paint thinner on your painting is generally a no-no. So here we go. I'm going to very, very loosely put some color in here. Now, one thing you want to avoid is when you're doing a long area like this, don't do that. Don't paint along that long section. If you want to make it appear like it's behind something else, in this case, the finger, put a little bit of extra time in to paint across. And that's going to make it look like it actually goes behind what you're doing. If you do this, it just looks like it's running alongside of it. It's not going to look like it goes behind that finger. So you want to be careful not to push paint under your, your masked tape uh, and go horizontal. Now here, this is where I like to kind of get a little bit expressive. 
uh, I've been holding a little too tight. So we're gonna back off. I like to kind of change the direction of my strokes. I want more, more uh, uh, medium, make my paint a little, little milkier. So it goes on a little smoother. I also like that it's kind of transparent at this point. I'm still seeing it premature. This first layer is really just gonna be a blocked in section of color that I'm gonna work into afterwards. Now, do I do it when it's wet or when it's dry? Uh, that depends on what you wanna do. Uh, what's probably gonna happen is I'm gonna probably work in some basic uh, changes in value while it's wet. And then when it's dry, that's when I'm really gonna push the detail. Um, I say dry, I mean cure. Oil paint doesn't dry, it cures. It's not an evaporation process. It's an actual chemical change of the paint. Um, so it cures and becomes a solid rather than just the water getting sucked out of it as it evaporates like acrylic paint, which dries in two minutes. So this is milkier, so I wanna be even more careful to not push my paint underneath the tape. You may have to change the angle that you're you're painting so that you paint from tape to panel rather than panel to paint because uh, that'll push that paint underneath your tape uh, so be extra careful especially now this is I think too too thin and milky and this is gonna run so you definitely don't want that so I'm not terribly happy with that consistency, but I do like the transparency I'm seeing. I don't know if you can see it. Although you can see now that it's on there, you can see the color a little bit better. You can see that it is slightly green-ish um, and not quite that black that it looks like on the palette and they in the camera. So here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna be careful to not paint from panel to tape. Sometimes it is unavoidable, but try to avoid it if possible. I like to really vary the direction of my brush strokes. Because if I vary the direction of my brush strokes, I'm gonna get a lot of interesting uh, interactions between them. So if I have, you know, them going all different directions when they meet, it's gonna make more interesting uh, shapes, I guess, even though you're working with one one uh, uh, opaque your paint is, is going to change as your brush strokes interact with each other. You can especially see that here in the sky area. I don't know how well, well you can see it, but you can see where it's thinner. You're actually seeing some of the orange of the imprimatura behind the blue. And that's, you're essentially putting some orange, which is the opposite of blue, right next to it, but in a complex pattern. And it's just something you can't paint. You can't put that directly in that configuration, but if you have it behind it and you work transparent, you're gonna get that depth. You're gonna get something much more interesting than a solid blue color right there. You kinda of wanna avoid solid. I mean, unless you're working very illustratively, you know, if you're, um, you know, if that's what you're going for, solid chunks of color, like a cartoon or a comic or something like that, it works in that situation. But if you want interesting brushwork, complex color layering, you gotta use that transparent paint and let that color behind it show through. So I have blocked in this, this mask. Um, I have a base color. I'm gonna clean this color out of my brush and I'm going to start working on some of the structure. So I'm gonna be looking at my source and I'm gonna say, okay, where are the highlights on this thing? And this is gonna be really tough because I'm gonna have to mix a different blue. I know that when I 
When I add more white, it's going to make it more opaque no matter what. White is a very opaque, you can get less opaque whites, but it's still going to be more opaque than this ultramarine blue, which is notoriously thin and transparent. Um, it's going to make my highlight a little more opaque, which is necessarily a bad thing. Uh, typically highlights are more opaque than shadows or are typically seen as more translucent. Um, so maybe it's not a bad thing. I don't know how it's going to look. Uh, I'm just going to block it in, see how it goes and go from there. So I'm going to rinse this out. I'm, all I'm going to do is gonna, I'm just going to add a little bit of white to the mixture I already made. Um, see how it goes. I always like to keep my paint thinner closed. It's in this little tin thing. I always like to keep it closed when I'm not actively cleaning a brush because this stuff is dangerous. If you do use this, probably should have mentioned this in my last stream, but uh, paint thinner uh, does give off fumes that are uh, deadly. So you want to make sure you are in a well-ventilated area. You want to cover this stuff up when you're not using it. I like to completely close it just so I don't actually accidentally spill it. Because if you spill this and if you have carpets or whatever, or drop cloth, that, that is basically done for. Um, depending on what the carpet's made out of, it can even like eat the carpet. That's um, why you don't put this stuff in plastic. You always want to use glass or metal. Um, because if it's in plastic, it'll just eat it and you'll just have a big mess. So um, that's why I actually latch mine, it avoids any issues. And luckily, knock on wood, I've never had a, a catastrophic like, spill or something like that. So you want to wipe all this stuff out. If you are familiar with Bob Ross, He'll beat the devil out of it. He's using those bigger brushes. It's hard to beat the devil out of these little things. I could probably do it if I wanted to, but I don't want to make a mess. Bob Ross is is a crazy man making a mess with his paint thinner. Um, I'm literally in my studio in my apartment. I'm not making a mess. So I'm going to make this a little whiter. Going back to my palette knife, going to mix a little bit of white into the mix and Paint in some highlights, see how it goes. I am very afraid of adding too much white. That is my biggest concern right now. Be too much contrast between what we put down. And this is actually brightening it up quite a bit. So I think what I might do is I might add a little bit orange in it too or that uh that warm yellow i mean okay i think i need a little bit more white now one thing you can do is you can bring your palette knife up and look at what you have versus what is already there and you can see if you've removed what you want Also another good um, advantage to using a palette knife over a brush. You can kind of do the same thing with a brush, but your brush is gonna be bristles. It's going to be, um, there's going to be more texture to your paint. You're not gonna get a good idea. If you mix your paint and then you drag your palette knife, you're gonna have a pretty thin, smooth layer of paint on there. That will be very, very uh, easy to compare to what you have without any uh, any complex texture or something like that. Something else I haven't mentioned is that when you're using brushes for oil specifically, you want to make sure that they're like a natural hair brush. You want them to be thick bristles. You don't want like a smooth a smoother brush. I don't have any any out right now, but brushes for like acrylic, they're smoother. They're they're almost like silky bristles. You want to avoid those for oil paint um, because oil paint is just thicker in general. Um, you need those thick bristles to really hold the paint. Also, if you want textured, expressive brush, brush strokes, 
you're going to get that much easier with a coarse hair brush, natural hair, than you will with those synthetic smooth hair brushes for acrylic or tempera uh, paints. So I'm going to move to a much smaller filter for this. So we have filbert, it's slightly smaller, still not a round brush, it is flat, it's pinched flat by this metal piece here. And we're going to use that for our hi highlights and get a little bit more um, tighter, a little tighter in our, in our detail. Uh, basically the smaller the brush, the more detail you're going to get out of it. We're going to start broad strokes and get tighter and tighter and tighter until we have what we want. So I have this color. I'm going to go with it. I don't really know if it's quite as light as what I'm looking for, but I think it's, I think it's pretty close. If you want to avoid going too light, you don't want to have something that looks like if you squint, just looks like black and white. You know, we want this to appear to be a solid bluish color. Now those highlights will be slightly lighter and maybe the shadows will be slightly darker, but unless you're like putting spotlight on only half of this thing, it's going to be subtle. So don't mix too much white into your color that you're trying to paint your highlights into with. So I have way too much stuff in my hands. I need a drink. All right, I'm back at it. And it's, uh, looks like we got uh, about 35 minutes left. I think that's plenty of time to get our highlights in here. We're gonna get a very blocky uh, idea of where our lights and darks are in this painting. We're not worried about detail. We're not worried about that little lip we can see, you know, right here where this eye hole is, you know. We're not worried about, you know, uh, holes where like a, an elastic band would be, you know, uh, strung through. Actually, I don't think there's even one of those on this type of mask, but we're not worried about that. We are worried about basic shapes in our different values. We have this middle slash dark color. We're going to paint in a middle slash light color, and we are going to slowly build structure to this mask. So, I wanna work a little thicker than normal here. Chris6079, thank you Chris6079 for the uh, follow. That means your name needs to go on the wall. If you have a preference where, let me know in like the next five seconds while I write down your name. Otherwise, I'm just going to wing it. Chris6079 Thank you, Chris6079. I hope to see you again uh, Monday or Tuesdays, 6.30 to 9. I'm not going to kick my camera over. And... I'm just going to wing it. We don't have a lot over here. I mean, not quite as much tension over here, so I think I'm going to try and save that. Uh, even though I did put some there already, I think I'm going to build up this area here. Um, this is getting harder and harder to do. I'm like, like eight feet away from my monitor at this point. But this looks good. Not actually on wall, really. So we'll see how this goes. Chris. Chris. 60. 70. Nine. Thank you, Chris, 60, 79. Oh God, I'm falling over. Doesn't matter. I'm glad because I read that after I already put it down, <laughs> which seems to be the case. I think there's a delay to the chat. 
uh, or there's a delay to me talking. I don't know which the delay is, but uh, glad that worked out. If there's a delay between my audio, what I'm saying, and when you see my mouth move, let me know. There are some things I can do about that. Um, if it's not happening or if it doesn't bother you, then ignore it. So back here, we have this on our, this on our brush. We are going to paint in these uh, very rough, chunky, blocky highlights on this mask. So the first thing you're noticing is that right here, we're just gonna come down right there. And it's gonna extend out like this. It's gonna slowly blend in like that. And it's going to loop down here. And there's a little bit here on the edge. Tiny little bit right there. That's really it for this side. It's very simplistic. I don't know if you can really see it too much there, but uh, once this dries, it'll be less, uh, less shiny, I guess. Uh, may also try and get a little closer with my good camera and so this piece of crap. Anyway, moving to the other side. Very, very clear highlight right here. It extends from the underside of the hand and it dissipates in like that. Kind of curves down similar to the other side. And then a little bit on the outside, almost all the way down. We want to make sure we don't just outline the side. We want to break it up a little bit. Maybe we want to blend it in some areas. Maybe just break it up with a perpendicular brush stroke. You don't really want to just outline an edge the width of your brush, uh, unless you're specifically going for that. If you look at like Egon Schiele, uh, he'll he'll do a, a figurative drawing and then he'll take gouache, which is basically like white paint, and he'll just literally go around the entire outer edge, the width of the brush. And it looks stunning, it works, it kind of makes the figure pop out from, from the background, but Unless you're as good as Egon Sheila, don't do it. Not that you you may not, I mean, you, you may not be it now, but you may grow into it, but until you get to that point, don't outline edges. So this is actually almost entirely highlight. So this is going to work well. We're almost covering the entire thing except for some of the corner up here. This is going to connect here. And I think we are good. Oh, we forgot this in here, but that's okay because there are no highlights. It's such a tight area in between fingers that that's just not going to uh, get any light. What I do want to do before I stop is I do want to really push that into a very, very dark uh, value. Uh, so right now it's kind of middle, it's transparent. You're seeing the orange through the, uh, through the blue. I want to mix a more opaque blue, really make that dark, really make it clear that it's in shadow. I would do the same thing with with the rest of the mask, but there isn't a lot of super darks. Right here kind of is, so maybe I'll do that. But to do that, it's cleaning this, this highlight color. It's not technically a highlight, but a lighter value here. Cleaning that out of my brush. I'm gonna go back to my original color, and I'm going to use a little less uh, medium. And so it's a little thicker. 
and really, really make that dark blue color. And slightly more opaque, it's gonna look, appear darker. We're really gonna push that. Now one thing that's also happening here, which I like, and it wasn't actually on pur purpose, but when you're trying to build uh, depth and volume, uh, you want to make an object really, really look three-dimensional. You have to remember that warm colors kind of come forward out of the painting and cool colors go back in space. So if you're painting like a sphere, you want your highlight to be warm, you want that warm color to kind of eventually become a cooler and cooler version of itself because it goes back in space until you actually can't see you know, the surface anymore. That's really going to make going to make that sphere really, really volumetric, I guess you could say. This actually turned out to be a, a less greenish version of the blue, so slightly cooler. And so that's really going to make it go back in space. It's really going to look like it's back behind those fingers. So it wasn't intentional, but I'm going to keep it. Um, cool. We're also going to make this a little darker here, or I said before. So like right here. It's going to come out from behind this finger. We're going to almost blend it. We're going to vary our brush strokes. And there we have it. Now, I just want to double check, there is a bit of a dark area right here. That's, I'm liking that. Now, already, I don't know if you can see it. Wait, you know what, there's more, there's more darks here. There's more darks. I am missing some of these darks. I'm right there. And across this edge here. All right. So I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to clean out this brush. I'm going to move the camera closer so you can see this. Hopefully, I uh, definitely need a better camera than this, but we're going to deal with it. I really hope you can see. The nuance that's in this now, because we didn't go super contrasting colors with our highlights and shadows, it's very subtle, and you're gonna see the subtlety in this. And I think it is exactly what this needs. Yeah, that's nice. It's kind of hard to to paint with these lights set up does get uh, a little too reflective sometimes. I'm actually gonna, one thing I, I like to do is if I ever need to blend, I like to use my finger instead of a brush. Now, why? Um, I don't like blending with brushes, to be honest. Um, it's really just personal preference. Um, which is kind of weird because typically I don't, I'm kind of anal about my hands being clean. But when I'm painting, I really just want to do the thing that my brain wants to happen. And it's just easier to use my hands than to switch brushes or, you know, because typically you want to blend with a dry brush, not the brush, the brush that you have paint on. Um, it's just a pain in the ass. More brushes to clean. You just do it real quick. You want to avoid getting fingerprints in it. So I, I like to use like, the side of my finger rather than like the fingerprint part of your finger. Uh, and if you just tap, uh, tap a bunch, you'll slowly blend that color into the nearby colors and you'll get what you're looking for. So I think, I think we have 
exactly that. Really just want to make sure at this point that there are no like blatantly hard edges. Certainly something I want to avoid because this is a relatively smooth object. And there we go. So I'm going to clean my brush, clean my finger. Now, depending on how anal you want to be about your brushes and how long you want them to last, there is an oil paint cleaner. Uh, I think my music stopped. One second. So there is an oil paint cleaner. Also, don't store your brushes in your turpenoid like I just did. Um, really don't want to leave them in there. You don't want to leave your paints in there and then when you need it, use it. Because um, this stuff will damage your brushes. This stuff is nasty. Um, there is a, an oil paint cleaner that is good to... Uh, you can rinse it, um, rinse your brushes out after you use your paint thinner. Uh, you can use this oil paint cleaner and water, like in the sink, and that'll really make them last forever. Um, me, I, I typically spend extra time in the paint thinner to try and get everything off, and then I just make sure that it's, it brushes off clean. If there's still pigment in the brush, I'll put it back in the, t the paint thinner, and basically just keep doing that until it's clean. I've actually never used the oil paint cleaner, so I can't even tell you if it's worth it or not. I just don't do it. Hold on. So, let me try and get a good shot of this. I'm going to put filbert brushes back in real quick. Um, I use this kind of thing for brushes. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, basically, you can just roll it up into this thing and then tie this around and then all your brushes are right here. Um, there aren't really a lot of better options than this, to be honest. I think this is as good as it gets. Um, there are these little pockets. Uh, I do have different kinds in here. I have some more detailed brushes, these big ones for covering. I actually have these bamboo brushes for India ink. They're really beat up and I'd probably never use them again. I'd probably get other ones if I ever needed to, but if they're like, they're really good for like calligraphy. Never use them, certainly not for oil painting. But here you can see I have them separated by flat, round, which we didn't use a round brush at all. But here you'll see a round brush in action. It's got the cap on it, but it's, it's round. If you look at, you know, long or whatever you call that way. Um, really that's all I use, flat, occasionally round, and filbert. And I, I clean this brush, I guess so. Alright, so that's my brushes, just wanted to show them quick. Um, now I want to try and get a close up on this, so you can see it a little better. I think I'm just going to take this bed. see if we can do it. You can't really see that, to be honest. It kind of just looks flat, but I can assure you that it's not. And actually, I'm going to see if I can take a pretty decent picture of this and put it on Instagram uh, as soon as I end the stream. If you want to see it in detail, just check out my Instagram. Just Instagram slash uh, nougat. Remember, the first O in nougat is a zero. Uh, so N zero O G I T. I uh, think that's everything. Uh, looks like we still have 20 minutes left. So, tempted to take this, this tape off. I really, really want to, but I shouldn't because I'm not done yet. Um, I'm going to have some more detail to do. Don't want to retape it. I can potentially work this without. Not gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off. That'll be tomorrow. Uh, it won't be tomorrow because I do want to let this cure. 
So it'll probably be next Monday that this tape will come off. It's going to be very satisfying to watch. Um, tomorrow, I know what I, there's still an arm to paint and a leg to paint. I don't know if I'm in the way here. Um, there's a complex pattern tattooed here that's actually very two-dimensional despite being on a three-dimensional sphere which I think is really going to play with your eye a lot and be like what the hell's going on because the purpose of this entire painting is mystery it's kind of like what I like to, to I like my subject to be mysterious um, you know so when you first look at it you're thinking what the hell is that but then you can kind of read into it a bit so that's kind of the idea there. I do need to plan out that pattern. You can see a little, little bit there. Maybe you can't, I'm not sure, but uh, that's gonna be a pain in the ass to paint around because I'm going to have to essentially lay out the pattern and then paint all the sections between that pattern to look like flesh and still have it look like it's one fluid shape that's going to be a pain in the ass. Same with the leg here. Um, we could maybe do some of the hair, or maybe we could paint in some of this. I kind of want to use this same color here. Um, maybe not. We'll see how that goes. Maybe I want more of a brown over there because this um, this fabric here is also going to be a similar color there. Maybe we, we move into some of the wood. I'm going to have to really think about this. Um, but I'm gonna, oh, I'll, I'll wait. We'll see what, I need. tomorrow, no. I'm not doing any of this. Tomorrow, I'm gonna work on a brand new surface. We're gonna prime it. We're going to uh, premature it. Premature it, I guess. And premature can be a verb. Um, and we're, we're just gonna start. We're just gonna start painting. There's not gonna be this drawing stuff. We're gonna focus on direct painting set up a palette it's it's going to be very different from this um i'm just going to set up a board right over top of this um i'll show you how to paint your uh, paper to your working surface if you're working on paper you definitely want to have a piece of masonite behind it that you uh, tape the paper down to um, because it's going to get wet from the paint when it gets wet, it's going to uh, loosen and down well. When it dries, it's going to actually be tighter than it started out being. And so you're going to have a nice flat surface to paint on. It's not going to be all wobbly, but the taping is super important. And guess what we're going to use? Our artist tape. So, um, I might just call it here, uh, Joan Star. This was both informative and dope. Thank you, Joan Star. That is the goal. Um, if you ever have any questions, just put them in chat. Um, I guess at this point, I'm ending the stream a little early. Uh, if you have some questions, let me know. I'm happy to answer them now before I end things. But uh, um, if not, uh, I'll see you tomorrow.